Today we're going to be reviewing Zorin OS 18. As Windows 10 has finally come to an end of life a few days ago, more and more people are looking for alternatives instead of having to go to Windows 11 or even buy new hardware in order to support Windows. We're going to discuss in more depth why this distribution is a great choice for people thinking about switching from Windows to Linux. To start things out here, I have Zorin opened up and this is the current tour. We're going to hit start tour and we're guided by the interface here. We're told how to open up and launch our apps, change up the experience. If we want the desktop to look different for us, we're going to be definitely checking out Zorin Appearance as it is one of the best tools. You can set up your online accounts, including now OneDrive. You can also link a phone and computer with Zorin Connect. And finally, there's updates to their software center, which we're going to be checking out as well. This happened recently. It was redesigned. And finally, we're ready to use Zorin OS by hitting close. Zorin OS's current claim is that 18 is a huge leap forward pack with improvements to make your computer more powerful, easy, and enjoyable to use. And the main focus here is the fact that Windows 10, with it reaching its end of life since it was released on the 14th, in most of the world, an estimated 240 million computers that don't meet Windows 11's strict hardware requirements will be left behind. I talk about in depth about all of these requirements and what options you have if you're trying to change over from Windows in a different video. I'm going to post that video in the description below. But back to the review on Zorin, the main point here is to get Windows users, especially the ones who can't upgrade their operating system due to legacy hardware, another operating system choice. One of the most notable changes here is a new look. What you'll notice at the bottom right off the bat is we have a rounded bottom bar with some tweaking on the way that icons show up. And we have this new button called send feedback, which we can directly relay how we feel about the desktop experience and Zorin OS, because Zorin is really trying to improve its user experience and fine tune things, an awesome button to send feedback. And mainly that takes you to a web page that allows you to input that feedback. Let's talk about what's all down in the newly rounded bottom bar. We have our start menu, which is very typical of what you would see in Windows, more of the Windows 10 focus than anything. You have your subcategories like accessories, graphics, internet, office, sound, and video, system tools, and utilities. You can click for all apps as well and then ser simply search for them, either by typing into the search bar or, of course, scrolling through. Plenty of stuff installed. LibreOffice is the default office suite here. It looks much like you would see in the Microsoft Office suite. We also have the, all the home users' directories, including home, desktop, documents, downloads, music, pictures, and video on the right-hand side as a shortcut, and then the user itself up top. You can change up what the user looks like in other system settings in here, and one of the best things to take a look at as soon as you install Zorin is the appearance. And in appearance, you'll notice something right here called Zorin Appearance. Click that. Now you can change between the layout, theme, effects, and other different parts of the user interface actually one of the best things about Zorin itself because no matter what kind of theme you like, whether it's a Windows theme, which we're kind of on right now, or you wanted something a little more compact, you can select that as well. And you'll notice at the bottom now we get these different clickable window options, or you can even go to something like GNOME if you're interested. Regardless, tons of layouts you can switch between. You can also set different themes. And we did receive more colors for the themes this round. And this is all from feedback. Zorin OS 18 now features a yellow and brown theme. I do like the default personally, very easy on the eyes, but let's go dark as I think this looks really good. The team has been hard at work clearly making things really pop in this dark theme. I love the way this looks. I'm surprised I hadn't used it in the past, but it's one of my favorite themes on any distribution. It just looks great on the eyes, especially with that blue tint accent color. Let me know what you enjoy in the comment section below, but let's keep moving on because we've got a lot to cover. You can go through things like effects and enable disable animations depending on how good your hardware is. You can even take out the animations if you want. The spatial desktop cube, which allows you to switch between workspaces in 3D. Let me show you what it kind of looks like right now to switch between workspaces. If you click down here, this is a new button actually. We'll get into that, but you can switch between a whole new workspace and desktop. If we go back to Zorin Experience and check the desktop cube, it gives us a little cooler experience here where you can actually just drag and go between what they call a 3D desktop. I love the way this is made and the how fluid it is. It's a little extra, whatever, but if you have the hardware and you like playing around, it's definitely something to enable. You can also change the way the windows are focused. 
and the way that they appear. But one thing I want to show you is I'm going to launch a few things here. Just give me a moment. I want to show you the new tiling manager that they've created. You can now go up top and then select much like you can on Windows 11, how you want things to show up. For example, if I wanted to put things in a four square format, I can now by simply going up top, you'll notice that you get a little hint showing up here, notice, and then you just allow whatever you're trying to place to go in that space. So we'll just put the appearance up there as well. And there you go. I think that looks pretty cool and it works very well. You can also change between the views. One thing I'll say that they don't have is by default, if you select a view, usually, at least on Windows, you're able to then specify what three applications, let's say you go with the three tiling effect that you want to use. It just asks you, okay, which other ones would you like to select? One other thing I don't like is some of these applications aren't actually using a third of the view. For example, we get a little bit of crossover here on the web browser and I can't make it any smaller, which is a little silly, but regardless, things work out for the most part there. I do like this new feature and the way that you can tile things more efficiently on your computer. Simply just drag a window to the top of the screen. A pop-up will appear as you have noticed and you can arrange your windows in whatever layout that you want. What's also cool is you can create your own tiling layouts as well. You can do this in the Zorin appearance. So we're gonna go back there, Zorin appearance. Oh, it looks like we already had that open, all good. Inside of Zorin appearance, windows, go down and select advanced tiling window. Click the settings and here is where you set everything you need when it comes to the tiling shell behavior. Very cool, you can even create and edit your own layouts, pretty sweet. Not many distributions do this. In fact, I think this is about the only one that gives you this much support for your tiling shell. Definitely check this out if you're using Zorin 18. It's one of those things you can miss potentially and it should not be missed as you can create powerful key bindings and even set up custom keyboard shortcuts with window tiling however you want it to show up giving you almost a true window tiling experience. Now I wouldn't go that far because it's not as powerful as something like the hybrid one from Pop! OS, at least in my opinion. It doesn't work quite as well, it's not as fluid, but a great step forward. And I think the Zorian OS team is going to be making this better and better. Fantastic work, one of the biggest improvements and updates of this whole entire Zorian 18 experience. And if you're enjoying this experience and checking out Zorin 18, don't forget to subscribe below and smash that like button on the way back up. We're gonna be talking about the new and improved software store as well. Now this has been updated for a while, but I just enjoy the look and feel here. So we're gonna go through it a little bit. Since a ton of people use it in the software store, Zorin allows you to get all your wonderful applications. What's neat now is when you go to search for things, so let's say I wanted to install something like Obsidian. Notice that it is available here and you can select what repo you want it from, but this isn't what changed. What changed this, if I try to go online and actually install Obsidian, let's say I had the universal Windows download. I'm gonna put that in my downloads here and then open that up. What's gonna happen now is we're gonna get a notice. In this notice, it says Obsidian can be installed from software. And it tells you that, oops, exe is not a known Linux format, unknown Windows app. What it's suggesting here is either install Windows application support so you can run Windows applications natively here in Zorin or instead install Obsidian. So we hit install Obsidian and look what loads up right in the background, exactly the page that we were in, a verified flat pack that you can install directly from the store. This is new and a lot of people are gonna enjoy using this because the operating system is recognizing when we do something that we might've wanted to do when we try to install an application, but maybe we're trying to install it for the wrong platform. Lots of new users don't know necessarily if there is a native application and that's gonna help those users, especially the ones coming from Windows. I think this is a fantastic win and that's why I wanted to showcase it. More Linux distributions should take note of this. So at the bottom here, I wanna go through some stuff as a little bit has changed. We already went through the start menu here. You can also reach the power button to shut things down, lock your screen or log out entirely. But right of that are gonna be pinned applications. You can lock your taskbar or even change the taskbar settings by right-clicking on the bottom bar. The default applications here, the default web browser is Brave Web Browser. We have Files, which has seen a little bit of an overhaul where you can actually search your entire system. 
if necessary, instead of just focusing on a current folder, if you go to the left-hand side, this is a now search everywhere feature, which searches and tries to find files and folders in all locations on the computer. It's a single place that allows you to find files and documents by whatever text you type in the top. So just don't get confused about the two different types. There is this another search one here, but this is to search in the current folder. The one on the left is a search everywhere. That's a little bit new with this files. So we've already been through the software center. Fantastic. We can send feedback right at that. Applications and icons are going to show up here in the middle, as we've seen, switching between the various different workspaces. And we've already enabled that 3D workspace effect, which is really cool. Right at that, we have additional options where we can take a screenshot easily by just clicking and then selecting the area we want to take a screenshot in. A few more shortcuts, including settings, locking the screen, powering things down, the volume output, whether you're wired or wireless. They also have a power mode, which you can set between balanced or power saver. You can change that to high performance as well in settings. And then you can switch between your light and dark themes. Right of that is a simple calendar and time of day in which you can see your notifications and set the do not disturb on. Very good. With things exited out and back to the main desktop, we should talk a little bit about Zorin OS Pro as it is receiving a few more layouts. As most Zorin users can just use Zorin Core, if you need a little extra support, that's the main reason you'd want to go with Zorin OS Pro or if you want some of the new layouts, they have a total of 12 layouts instead of the four or whatever we saw earlier. Basically, there's three new ones added in, a compact panel layout, as we can see here, a Linux Mint-like layout for Linux Mint users, and elementary OS-like layout for a clean minimalist style. Those three have been added in, and new applications have been included, including DeskFlow, which lets you share your mouse and keyboard across computers to maximize your productivity, Warp, which allows you to securely send files to each other through a local network or internet, Valet makes time tracking, simple for professionals, and EasyFX is an advanced audio output manipulation tool for creative professionals. There's also new applications to Zorin OS 18, the education edition, and so much more. We're not gonna get into everything. I wanna get back to the desktop environment, but I do wanna say that people who are not on Zorin OS 18 can simply upgrade their core from Zorin 17 to 18 as well. But I do wanna briefly show off the three main layouts that are available. This one kind of reminds me of the newer Windows 11 experience where you have your start menu, typically a search bar, which the search is up here, whatever. Then you have your icon set and your time and date. When you click the start bar, that looks very similar to what you see on Windows nowadays. Then Linux Mint, for those of us who have used Linux Mint, it does look very similar, especially when it comes to where applications are located versus the home user's directory and information. And finally, elementary OS, more like Mac on this one, where you can see a bar up top and then a dock at the bottom. Another big announcement from Zorin is the fact that they have OneDrive file integration now. For many users migrating from Windows, being able to access their files stored in the cloud is key when making the switch. That's why Zorin OS 18 adds OneDrive file integration to the built-in online accounts feature. Meaning if you want to add an online account, you can. And what you'll notice in here now is the Microsoft 365 OneDrive. You can put a client ID, tenant ID, and sign in to your OneDrive. You have different services as well, including Google, Microsoft, Nextcloud, and Microsoft Exchange. You can get your emails as well here if you want. Just put in an IMAP server, your username, your password, set up the SMTP settings, and boom, you can start getting emails directly on your desktop as well. All these applications are pretty fantastic. Zorin has done a great job of improving the user's experience, but if you wanna improve your Linux experience, check out my checklist, cheat sheet, and my map, all available at SavvyNick.com. Download those today. We can also enable an on-screen keyboard now, which again, in Zorin appearance, if we go down to interface and we select screen keyboard button and panel, we'll notice that this new button comes and appears and it looks much like a mobile phone keyboard. This is very nice because Zorin is clearly focusing its time and energy in a mobile friendly experience as well. As more and more people go mobile, this is key. And it is nice to see that Zorin is aware of that and is implementing more and more features in order to make their desktop experience mobile friendly. 
I'll say one thing that I've noticed, at least running stuff around, is if I click the search bar, it takes a moment for that keyboard to pop up. I'd like it to be a little more instant. I have griped about this in the past and I can get it to lose focus sometimes as well. For example, like clicking back behind here, but I can't get it to lose focus anymore, which is good. It used to be, I used to click around a little bit and we'd lose focus. That seems to be fixed. Now, if I actually go out and click, it goes away and everything goes away, which is fine as well. I would still expect the field to probably be there because I'd want to see what I input, but not a big deal. That might've actually been my problem. For example, I go off of here, it highlighted something, now it goes away, okay. It's all fine. It just takes a second to pop up. Another thing I wanna mention is do not bother using the keyboard if you have the on-screen keyboard. It becomes a mess. So I'm gonna to toggle that back off so I can actually use the terminal and show you some information. First, I wanna show you HTOP. We're currently fluctuating around zero to two percent of the CPU usage. The memory is currently at two gigs out of 8.3 gigs, which is a considerable amount over what I'm used to. There must be something working in the background. I'm usually seeing this around 1.1. Not exactly sure what's taking up so much memory, but the desktop shell experience, interesting. Not sure, but maybe I need an update at this point. Tasks, 115, 386 threads, 78 kernel threads, and we've been up for about 40 minutes. I'm actually gonna restart things just to get some confirmation. All right, and with a completely fresh reboot, as you can see, the system has only been up for about a minute. We're running around that 1.25 gig out of eight gigs, which is more in line with where I would think this would be. It's probably because I have a few extra things enabled at this point, just to show things off in this video. Again, I've seen it somewhere around the 1.2 before. Finally, we're gonna run NeoFesh and check out the system. This is Zorin OS 18 x86 64-bit. This is being emulated with Linux kernel 6.14. 1,876 source packages, 16 flat pack on the base system. It's running GNOME 46, and we're running the window theme Azorin Blue Dark Mode. And this is being emulated on an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X series and almost 1.3 gigs out of 8 gigs of RAM. So now I want to talk about the extra layer of support for Windows applications that you can simply install. It's not on by default, but you can install it. They make it easy. If you go down to the start bar, go to your search, type in Windows, spell it right, and click Windows App Support. This will load and install the package for Zorin OS. What is this? Installs the wine compatibility layer, as well as bottles, which is a containerization app. And after you install this, it's as simple as trying to run an executable on Zorin in order to run your Windows apps. Now, of course, not all applications are going to be compatible. Not everything works with wine and bottles, but I do wanna mention another thing that you can check out in order to get you even further as Adobe products have been proven to work on this new beta tool. And the tool I'm talking about is called WinBoat. You can install WinBoat and run applications on Linux with seamless integration, meaning they just appear as applications directly on the desktop environment, and you don't have to deal with complex compatibility layers. Instead, it's just a little virtual machine that basically runs in the background and allows you to pass through things like GPU and run some of the most prized apps. As you can see here, they're running Adobe Premiere Pro 2023 in other applications. It's been proven to run Adobe products. I know some of us cannot get away from them. Therefore, a great tool when both. So people trying to make the switch over from Windows to Linux could choose Zorin OS and it would be a great choice. As Zorin OS makes the switch easy, including doing things like being able to install compatibility layers in order to run your Windows applications, they make that process super easy. It can get daunting if you had to do it alone without their installer. You have a free Zorin edition, a paid edition called Zorin OS Pro. The free one's called Zorin OS Core. It's a familiar desktop that looks like Windows, which you already know how to use, especially for those Windows 10 users who are trying to find a new operating system at this point because their hardware cannot move to Windows 11. Overall, Zorin is doing great work and they continue to do so. The one interesting thing is they've finally ditched Firefox and went directly to Brave, an interesting move. Again, if you're one of those users who cannot upgrade past Windows 10, I highly suggest checking out Zorin OS it might be perfect for you. And if you made it to the end of this video, make sure to subscribe below and smash that like button. You're a true fan. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.